It's time for Show Off Sunday, where everyone has a chance to show off their own car, and here's this week's winner. Well, hello there. We're going to look at this motorhome right here. This is my motorhome. It's a 1986 uh, Toyota Sun Raider motorhome. And as you can see, it has a fiberglass, uh, molded fiberglass uh, coach on it. It's uh, automatic, uh, 2.4 liter, four cylinder Toyota engine. You can do a little walk around here. You can see it does have a, a air conditioner unit on the top. We'll start right here. This is like the grab handle for the for the side door, and it has a light for it. And this is the fuel, and this right here is fresh water fill for the fresh water tank. And this is the propane. And it has a little gauge there. Right now it looks like I got three quarters of a tank. This is the water heater. This right here is fresh water inlet. Like if you're in an RV park, you can hook up fresh water here. This is a space for a um, generator. There's no generator in here right now. This compartment here is the house battery. There's a battery underneath the hood for the truck, and then this runs everything in the coach. It's also charged by the alternator. And if you decide to hook up to a RV park or shore power, and this is the uh, that's the cord. This is the back of the refrigerator. The refrigerator runs on propane or 110 shore power. This is a furnace uh, outlet right here and that's the exterior just a little bit of history on the toyota motorhomes the very first toyota motorhomes were made in probably the mid to late 1970s and they were quite light and they were maybe 16 foot long 17 foot long and they had uh, a regular Toyota axle. The motorhome manufacturers got their cabin chassis from the dealers and they were very popular and as time went on uh, the motorhomes got longer, bigger, and heavier. And when they did uh, around 1979 uh, they the manufacturers put two other wheels on the single wheel axle. They weren't really a dually axle. So what happened was it, it was a little dangerous because the bearings would wear out and the axle would fail. And this brought some lawsuits and some concerns. And so what happened was is they had a recall and the manufacturers had to split the cost. I believe it was split the cost with Toyota to replace the axles, which was called a full floating rear axle. This is what a, a full floating uh, true dually axle looks like. You can always tell by the, the big hub right here. So if you decide that you want to buy a Toyota motorhome, make sure you look for that. If it doesn't have that big hub there, I would advise you don't buy it. Eventually, in 1986, uh, Toyota was supplying the cabin chassis directly to the coach builders, the motorhome, Toyota motorhome builders, and they all had full floating axles. Model here is in 1986, and so it has the full floating uh, good axle on it. Because of the axle recall, a lot of the manufacturers, maybe 10 or so, something like that, uh, they dropped out and they closed their doors. Let's look on the inside. As you come in the, the side door here, this is, here it has a toilet and a shower and it also has hot water and it has 
a uh, exhaust fan right here. And this is the cab area and it has a cab over bed. And that insert right there is part of the mattress and you can shove it in here so you can you can have I think it's a, considered a full-size bed has a curtain right here and lights on both sides coming over here is the kitchen and we also have a monitor panel there's the power and then it has the battery condition and fresh water tank uh, monitor and uh, black water tank and gray water tank and hot and cold running water in the sink this is the sink here it has a cover and then we have a four burner stove right here and this this is a match light and you can see the controls are here and also this is all like stainless steel and then this is the oven here you can see it in there okay cover also you can pull out this little thing here for an extra counter space and range hood this is the refrigerator here it's a Dometic and the model number is RM2400 gas electric and it runs on gas and electric this is it here and I have a little temperature gauge there and it has racks here and they have the instructions like glued down here permanently so you'll know how to light it that's how you light it right there and your fuel selection you can put it to gas or off or electric so you can hook this up to a campground and it does have a little freezer here too there's the freezer and it has a lock so you, while you're going down the road you can lock the door if you think it's gonna come flying off flying open and right here is some drawers and that's the furnace down there and here is control it's all automatic you turn it on or right here turn it on and this is the current temperature and then you switch your your temperature here and it'll just light up and, and go automatic I do have a little TV here I guess that's a 9 inch screen now this is the inverter that I have it's just a basic inverter and I installed this myself so I can run the TV or charge laptops or run uh, other stuff now it does have uh, a few outlets here but those will, will work if you're if you're hooked up to shore power and it does have that's like a cigarette lighter 12 volt outlet and that's always hot so you can always uh, plug in 12 volt as you can see there's cabinets all the way around here and there's like a little shelf back there in the rear that's the rear window and a clock cabinets here and also and also there's like a little closet here that you can hang your clothes and it has and believe it or not it has like a little light and the dinette and the dinette can seat four people will actually turn into a bed And now it's a bed. Now, one big turning point, but in 1989, something happened. Toyota started putting in a three liter, six cylinder in their pickup line. So that was a big difference, a lot more power because this Sun Raider here, I mean, this 
Toyota motorhome, 18 foot. It, it runs out pretty good, you know, on flat land, but if you get on hills, you're gonna have to gear down. Now this one is an automatic. It's a three-speed automatic. It actually has an overdrive, but it's not advisable to use the overdrive. You won't get better gas mileage because it's a, it's a true dually, full floating axle, but it's kind of like loaded down. So you don't really want to use the overdrive. You won't get better gas mileage and it won't help. As a matter of fact, it might hurt the transmission if you use overdrive. So just use it without overdrive. 1989, the, the six cylinder came out and it had a better automatic transmission. Now all the Toyotas motorhomes, they also made a uh, five speed manual. But when that came out, that was a big, dif big difference. And Sun Raider, was only manufactured between say like 1977 and 1991. I think the the axle recall kind of did them in. But you know Winnebago and some other ones they still made Toyota motorhomes they were real popular. In the 90s they were still making them and they usually made like a 21 foot. This is the 18. Sun Raiders were made 18 foot and 21 foot. So they got the six cylinder, they got the whole axle thing straightened out so everything was good right wrong there was a problem with the cylinder heads on that six cylinder engine and toyota had a recall now i'm not sure if it was just that engine in general or just the ones that were on the cabin chassis the cylinder heads there was something wrong with them and they had to take them in and toyota had to foot the bill for the whole thing i mean you had to go to a toyota dealer and they would replace them okay so things were moving along and by this time toyota was getting a little upset because you know they had they went through this whole axle thing and now the cylinder heads for the six cylinder refused to supply uh, cabin chassis to the toyota motorhome builders or manufacturers and that was it so if you ever wondered why you don't see any new Toyota motorhomes out because you know people they get get good gas mileage and and as you know they're very the Toyota drivetrain is usually very dependable well that's why you know Toyota just got out of it now I think it was just North America because I think they they actually still supplied uh, cabin chassis to manufacturers in Australia and Europe but you know those have the steering wheel on the other side and some people some people actually import them in you know but they're they're not cheap <laughs> you know there's a lot of people that have these Toyota motorhomes and they're very passionate about them and especially the six cylinder models and they're usually not selling and you know they if you want to buy one you have to look for a while and it's usually some uh, a motorhome that's going to need some repair and the ones that are really uh command a premium price are the sun raiders that are 18 foot from that are six cylinder from 1989 to 1991. this one's 86 and it's a four cylinder oh now uh, one of the things that people always ask is what kind of gas mileage do you get with this? I was driving this motorhome in Beverly Hills and some guy pulled up next to me and wanted me to wait uh, roll down the window and he asked me what mileage do you what kind of gas mileage do you get? Well uh, just running around in the city I get around 11 miles to the gallon. Now getting on the freeway getting on the open road I have got as high as 17 miles to the gallon so roughly you know about 15 uh, between city drive-in and and getting on the freeway which is darn good for a motorhome because this has got a hot water heater it's got propane it's got a stove it's got a refrigerator it's got an oven it has a toilet and it has black water tank gray water tank fresh water tank and hot and cold water in the shower so there's a lot of things also it has like a roof AC and let me give it just a quick shot there it is right there and you saw it on the outside uh, the roof AC works pretty good in this thing uh, I had I was in uh, Vegas at a campground and it was like 100 plus degrees and I had the roof AC going and it kept it pretty cool I was up in Idlewild once and I had the furnace going. It was really cold. When I woke up in the morning, there was snow on the ground. I, I wouldn't recommend it.
don't it's it's more of a fair weather camper type thing but you can camp out in extreme weather if you want you can see there this this is fiberglass so it's not really that heavy it's uh 5500 pounds well that about wraps it up and if you want to watch any of my videos you can it's at uh, my youtube channel name is sense of style it's right there and that's it for now video and remember to have your car video highlighted here on my channel check this out so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell